Hello, welcome to Noob Aquatics again. This is Matthew, so I'm glad that you came back to join us. Today, um, we have pieced, pieced together a bunch of videos over a, uh, a month period of medicating fish. So, what was the problem is uh, some of our guppies started showing uh, colomanus worms coming out of their, their booties or their vent hole or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> but... Uh, but yeah, we noticed these little red things sticking out of the, the backside. It was only the female guppies. So so we took them and we uh, we quarantined them and we put them off into, uh, you know, the, the quarantine tank. When we got them in there, I started researching and trying to, trying to figure out what these things are. Because we had treated our fish over several periods with, you know, medications. So we did a trio of meds with, uh, you know, Maricin, with... Uh, um, Paracleans and what is that? Ikex. So we treated them there for the first week, waited two weeks, and then we treated them again with Paracleans, and then a month later we treated them again with Prazi Pro. But so we we assumed that they were free and clear, and then several months later they all came down with these little red things. Now first we started noticing it in the female guppies, and uh, we immediately took all the female guppies that had these things sticking out of their 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 booty uh, and put them into the uh, quarantine tank when we put them in there we started noticing that there were a couple other tanks that we had that had uh, some of the camelanus worms so in, in in to make a long story short even though it was only three tanks that we had that had camelanus worms we went ahead and treated every single tank in the house now what did we do so we we chose two medicines we chose finbendazole in a uh, medicated food, and we chose uh, levomysol. Now, the levomysol is a Fritz Aquatic medicine. Uh, it's called Expel P, and we go over that uh, here in one of the videos that I had pieced together. Now, keep in mind, these are videos over an entire month all pieced together into one, and we are comparing the effectiveness of uh, finbendazole to the levomysol. Now, the difference here is the uh, finbendazole is, is said to actually kill the parasites or kill these uh, uh, colomanus worms and uh, then they just they can poop them out and then you vacuum the substrate up before any of the eggs that may be on these dead worms uh, get eaten again by any of the other fish and then the uh, the levomysol which says to paralyze the worms now the question was, do they permanently paralyze them? Yes, I did find that out. So it's not a temporary paralysis. What happens is, is levomyosol permanently paralyzes these worms, the fish, and the, so these worms can loosen their grip on the fish's internal parts, and then the fish can poop them out. Now the problem is, is that when they poop them out, one of some of these worms may already have eggs. So you got to immediately the next day vacuum up the substrate. Now we went a little step further and vacuumed the substrate after 24 hours and then vacuumed it again after 72 hours just to be safe. And then uh, we treated them for a total of three weeks uh, for the levomysol. And then uh, we treated them a total of, was it three weeks for the finbin? So the finbin was two treatments, but it was spaced out uh, several weeks apart. So this is our comparison of the two meds. And at the end, I will kind of go over exactly which one worked better. So what did we do? Our flagfish tank, uh, had, uh, you know, we know for a fact had uh, uh, colomanus worms. So we treated them with the finbendazole first and with nothing else, just the finbendazole to see uh, how well it worked. And then we had the quarantine tank, which we treated with uh, the, the levomysol. Um, and then we, we tested that to see how that would work. And then every other tank uh, that we had in the house, we went ahead and just uh, treated first with the finbendazole. And then after we finished that treatment with the finbendazole, we went ahead and did two treatments on all the tanks with the levomysol. Why? Every other tank we did that on, the ones that weren't sick, is just because we wanted to make sure that everything in our house was free of these things since we weren't going to be adding, uh, really, really be adding any new fish anytime soon. So, so we treated them as a precautionary measure just to make sure that everything wasn't sick in the house. I didn't want these... Uh, call them mantis worms to come back again. These things are horrible and they are easily transferable. So if you put a net in one tank and you put that same net in another tank and there are call them mantis worms in, in the first one, 
you pretty much going to have column anus worms in both tanks. So, so yeah, so that's where we're at here. So let's get into the videos of where we unbox the medicine and, and start with the, uh, the levomyosol. So we're going to start with the levomyosol treatment videos, and then we'll move into the finbendazole uh, treatment videos and what we did with that and how we treated each tank. And then at the very end, I'll kind of go over what my comparison is. So if you want to skip completely all the way to the end, uh, you can do that as well and just find out which one worked best. Now keep in mind that this is what worked in our aquariums. Will it work in yours? Probably. These are these so far are known to work with pretty much anybody's aquariums. Some work better than others, uh, you know, for some fish because they actually eat a lot more of the food. And then some work, you know, better with the levomysol. So the fin bin is a food-based one. You can put it in the water. Uh, but the problem is, is that one has a much harder time absorbing through the fish's body. The levomyosol absorbs through the fish's body into the bloodstream of the fish. So that's why that one is affected in, uh, effective in the water column. But yeah, so let's get into the videos here of uh, the comparisons so that you can see what we did um, and uh, what the outcome was. And let's get into them. So expel pee. All right. Uh, this stuff here, this is a uh, powder that removes a internal parasites. Uh, so some of them that you uh, get are the nematodes, roundworms, uh, nodular worms, hookworms, and other internal and external parasites. Now the reason we have it is, hold on a sec, man. Now the reason we have it here is because uh, some of our guppies, due to either bringing in tube effects worms or um, some new plants that we had, um, may have carried in. Uh, the eggs, but uh, some of our guppies have come down uh, with colomanus worms. These are these little red things that stick out of the button. If they're that far, you know, they've already gone too far. So, uh, this particular drug here is uh, levomysol uh, hydrochloride. It's the, uh, the main anti worming agent uh, in here. It's also an immune stimulant agent as well, so the fish will pretty much start to feel better almost instantly. But what we're going to do is we're going to dissolve one packet. Get all that stuff down. Don't breathe it in. Go play. Just kidding. I can't get that over my face. I'm sitting on it. <laughs> Try not to breathe the medicine in. But just like I do everything else, I know for a fact that in my quarantine tank I have exactly 10 gallons because I have markings on the side to show. Because just like I, I a good uh, you know fish keeper does, or however you do it. I uh, measured out one gallon at a time and put a mark so that I can guarantee I have exactly 10 gallons of water in there. So one packet here is exactly 10 for an exactly for a 10 gallon aquarium. So we're going to put it in a cup with water from the tank. All right, and then I'm going to stir it up to dissolve it. Now this stuff is light sensitive, so uh, that's why I got my hand over here to kind of block it from the light that's up there. And as soon as we uh, get this stuff in the water, I'm going to put this green towel over top of the quarantine tank to make sure it doesn't get any extra light. Now this stuff here, we are comparing the, uh, how do you say it, how it works on these calamanus uh, worms against another drug. And uh, I will uh, explain what that one is. The other one though requires the fish to be eaten. So we're going to give the other one to the fish that are seeming healthy in the tank with it because if one one fish has columnus worms, you can just automatically assume everything in the tank has columnus worms. So yep, so let's stir it up. Make sure it's all dissolved. Alright, so it's all dissolved. Keep track of the time. So right now it is exactly 3.24 p.m. And I'm just going to put it in there. Alright. So 3.24 p.m. Put this on the paper towel so you're not getting nastiness all over your table or medicine on it. Right. And then from here, you want to cover it. So I got light coming from this direction. So I'm going to cover it completely as much as I can, front and back. Viewing sides, so these are the sides for viewing, so you can look at your fish, make sure you're left or right, one of them is available so you can look at your fish and see how they're doing. It's hard to see, but on this guppy, if you look, get my finger out of the way. Don't get your finger in the picture. 
track the guppy. Don't trust me. All right, on the back, <coughs> right there, no, and she has little worms sticking out of her. Let's see if I can get a picture of it this way without None. it messing up. I don't know if you can see that in there, but right there, right there on her booty side, she's got little worms sticking out of there. Uh, so if these fish are too far gone or have too many worms, this uh, Levis uh, Mott, I can't even say that word, Expel P, the drug in here, uh, may kill the fish instead of the worms. Now, so after 24 hours, you want to do a 25% water change, probably more than that, my guess. Um, I'm probably going to do a lot more because of the fact that it can kill your fish. So I will change out 25% of the water the next day, all right? Monitor them for another 24 hours, then I'm going to change another 25% of the water and still get up any poop. So I'm going to go a step further, and every time I see poop in there, I'm just going to clean it up assuming that it is paralyzed worms. And I'll do that for a week. After a week, we're going to use the meds again, all right, and do the same process over again. And uh, then we'll let you know how that, that worked compared to the other med that we're getting from, uh, from Discus USA. So if you look here, you'll see that it is a fenbendazole flake. This medicine is also a dewormer, but this dewormer right here, this is in food. It's harder to find outside of that, but what we're going to do is we're going to get as many worms out of these guys here and see how well that does and then I'll you know come back and I'll let you know how that happened and then I will uh, give them this too just as a safety precaution of another week or two later because this says this uh, fin fin bin dazzle that's just a crazy I'm pretty sure I'm saying that wrong this stuff here though it uh, it says it kills uh, the columnus worm so we're gonna see how that works by using it on the the display tanks and feeding them because all the fish that we currently have in our display tanks um, they are eating, so we want to make sure that they are safe. Even if they don't have them, we're going to go ahead and feed it to them just to make sure that they are actually clear of any potential worms that they may have that we can't see. So yeah, so we got that here, and then you want to always make sure you keep track so you know exactly when 24 hours has been so that you can change the water. So you're going to put up here, um, you know, whatever it is. So I put QT, expel, P, and then put the time. 24 p.m. and then I'll little, put a little note which tomorrow is the 23rd so not or 8 23 um, 25% and now I'll know what that is but that's just 25% change and then I'll put a little thing here that says 8 24 25% and again and then I'll just continue that uh, automatically Make sure you keep notes so you know when to start doing the, the water change. All right, well, um, so let's take a look and see what we do with the other medicine that we got, and we'll do that here in this uh, next, uh, next little piece. The first stage, which we've already uh, went in the video right before this, is treating the, uh, the, the female guppies and male guppies that we can see that have the camelanus worms sticking out of their, their butt um, with uh, levomisole. Uh, which is Expel P, all right? So the Expel P we bought from Ken's Fish. We got it for about $10 um, on there. If you are support Aquarium Co-op, you can get it for about twelve fifty or something like that off of Aquarium Co-op. And then on Amazon, if you can find the 10-pack, then uh, that's a miracle. Right now, they only sell the 20-pack. But yeah, so the first part is treating the, uh, the guppies that are currently showing signs of sickness, which are in the quarantine tank. Now we have the towel over it because it, this medicine, the levomosol, is light sensitive, so we want to keep the towel over there. We've already done a 24-hour uh, soak in there. Here, here in just a minute, I will be changing out 25% more of that water. Um, it'll be day number two. Uh, this is the uh, quarantine net. We have it over here so that we don't accidentally use it in our other tanks. But we did see a large chunk uh, of the camelanus worms come out of them. And I vacuumed them up uh, with the gravel vac yesterday. And I'm going to do it again today. There are some. I don't know if you see over there. Hard to see it, but there's some on the ground over there. And over there, there's some on the ground. Now, it says it paralyzes them. 
but it also says that the medicine can stay active in the water for up to seven days or something like that. So even though I changed out 25% of the water, there is still levomyosol in this water. So that's why I'm gonna change out 25% today. And then next week uh, we will do the same thing again and uh, treat them with the levomyosol and do the same process over one more time. And then after that, uh, we will check them to see how well they, they look. And then if they still look sick, we're gonna treat them with this other product. All right, so the other product, the other product is a medicated fish food right here, all right, from Everything Aquatic. We bought it off of Discus USA. Um, there's three, there's a few different names that their website has, but Discus USA, Everything Aquatic is who it's made by. This is a fin a fin ben dazzle Flake, all right. This is a dewormer. As you can see, it offered as the only food source for three to five days and repeat in three weeks to ensure new parasites are dealt with uh, to break the cycle. So this is known to actually kill the parasites. Uh, levomisol, which is something we're doing to help clear out their bowels, is known to just paralyze them. So we're gonna make sure that they are free of these camelanus worms by feeding them this food to kill it. And then after three to five days, we're gonna vacuum all the substrate really well and do a deep cleaning on all of our tanks. So that'll be fun. But why are we here right now? So right now we need to prepare the food. So preparing the food is very important. So what you're gonna need, because the flakes are huge in here, you can't just put this giant flake in there and expect your fish to start nibbling on it. So I recommend if you don't have one of these, um, get one of these grinders here. This is a mortar, mortar and pestle or whatever they call it. You can buy these at um, certain grocery stores online, that type of thing. But we have one of these specifically for our fish room and we use it to grind out flakes to make them smaller uh, for baby fish, for fry or anything like that or, or whatnot. Uh, but we mainly use it for the flakes. We don't like to handle the flakes too much uh, and get our oils all over it. So we take the flakes, put them in there and grinding up, grind them up to a little bit smaller, more bite size for the fish that we have. And then you wanna make sure you put it in something that you can put in the freezer. Um, so we get a Ziploc freezer, Ziploc baggie, which is what we have here. And we write on it what it is. All right. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. So you got to hit record uh, to actually record what you're saying. And I said a whole two, three minutes there and didn't say, didn't even notice that it wasn't recording. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. I'm going to put some in there. And this is the only time that I'm going to try to handle this food. The rest of the time I'm going to use a uh, uh, measuring spoon that we have over there specifically for fish food to try to just pull it out of there. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the flakes out. All right, I'm gonna take the flakes, you're gonna put them in here. And again, like I said, this is one of the only times that you're gonna handle this food. The rest of the time, you try not to touch it. And as you can see, I'll show you in just a second here where it specifically says, all right, or particularly where it says, if you see here, it says, and I'll try to block that out, wash hands after feeding. So you wanna try not to touch it, all right? So we're gonna take the pestle or mortar or whatever this is. I don't know what they're called. I know it's know what they call them online at the store, but we're gonna take this and we're gonna use the weight of this. We're not gonna push down any extra and we're just basically gonna let it break the food up. All right. So if you have you know, any knowledge of flake food, you know that it breaks fairly easy. So your goal is not to turn it into a powder. Your goal is to turn it into bite-sized pieces for your fish so that they can actually put their mouth around it. If you put a, a flake in there like this big around for like a pencil fish, they probably won't even touch it. And if they do, you're lucky. But they normally go after the smaller things. At least that's my understanding of our tanks anyways. Uh, the big things they try to avoid. So if it's as big as your fish, I mean, you can put it in there, but I recommend breaking it up. And this is the easiest way. You could use your hands, but just know that when you put your hands on there and you get your oils from your skin all over the flake foods, they start breaking down the foods because we got oils and enzymes in our skin that help break down certain things like proteins and carbohydrates like that. So why wouldn't they be in our, in our oils too? So try to avoid touching it as much as possible, which I'm sure there's some kind of biological, you know, thing behind that that could back me up, but I'm not going to look it up. It's been a long time since I've been in biomedical science in college. So yeah, so you're just gonna sit here and just do this until you get all of the flake food down from its ginormous little flake size. All right. 
down into bite size. Weird enough, the stuff smells like cooked salmon. <laughs> Maybe that's why the fish like it. I don't know. But that's what it smells like to me right now. It's very weird. But I don't plan on eating it, so. Even though I was told that it probably wouldn't harm me very much, but I'd have to eat the whole bag. But I don't plan on doing that. So, so now you're just going to take this and you're going to dump it into the plastic bag. Any leftovers that you have in there, all right? I have a special, you know, use on your medicated food only spoon. Here, I'm gonna scrape this. All right, and when I'm got it scraped down, I'm just gonna now scrape the red maining that I have on here into the bag. You see here, this is after two times. I'm gonna do that a third time, all right, for a total of three grinds. All right, because I have 10 fish tanks and one temporary tank, so technically 11, that I need to feed this food to. And then in about a week uh, or a week or so, I'm going to start feeding if the uh, levomyosol didn't clear out the uh, calamitous worms out of the, the people, the, the fish that are currently sick. I'm going to give them this too as a preventive just to, to completely eradicate those parasites. So, so now I'm going to do this a third time. And then after that, I'll show you what we do to feed them. Pause. <laughs> All right, so now we got all of it crushed up. So take a look at what it looks like after it's crushed up. So this is what it looks like. It went from a giant flake to these little bitty pieces here, bite-sized pieces here. And that just makes it easier for the fish to consume it because you want to make sure that they're actually eating this medicine. Most of the fish that we are currently giving this are actually eating. So, so we don't, I don't have any worries that they won't eat the food, especially since this is going to be the only food that they eat for the next three to five days. All right, so now we have it all crushed up here. All right, I got the actual package there from Everything Aquatics, which weird enough, the website says on, on the package says everythingaquatic.com, but I went to Discus USA. So like I said, they have multiple names, same company, just multiple names. There are some people out there that do that. But yeah, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to feed all of our fish uh, with it. And I'll show you one little thing that I need to do for one of my tanks because some of the fish and this tank right here never actually come to the top. So I have to basically take the food and put it in the substrate to, uh, around where those fish normally are to try to get them to eat it. So that way you can actually see what you're recording. And you'll see some of the fish, they don't come up. Okay, none of them are coming up. All right, the food's gonna fall down, they're gonna eat it. The females are coming up there to eat it. But I have fish that stay down here in the bottom. So how do you combat that? Pause it for a second. All right, so what you wanna do, hopefully you have a turkey baster or they actually sell these in the aquarium trade as a specialized tool, but it's just a turkey baster. You're gonna get one of those. Alright, you're going to get something to put the food in. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this food. Okay. Put it in here. Continue to feed them. They already ate all the food that was on the top, so I'm going to give them more. But now i got to get a, I got to get food to those picky ones in the bottom that aren't eating. So like I said, you're going to put food in here. I'm going to take water from this aquarium. All right, and I'm going to put it in here. Now, to make sure they get food, I'm going to suck this up. All right, and now I'm going to put food in the tank around areas where I know these fish will eat. So, so as you can see, the female right here, they're all actually going after the food and eating it. But I have a hong sloy right there that is my concern. 
and he's eating the food because it's down at the bottom now. Well, that's one of the easiest ways to get your picky, don't want to go to the top eaters to eat. All right, let's so make sure you get the food to them. Now another good thing about squirting the food in at the bottom will actually be for your bottom feeders. So your bottom feeders you need to medicate as well. So since most of our bottom feeders will actually eat the food that's on the, in the substrate, putting this food directly on the substrate will actually get that medicine to them also. But you'll see Simon here, he's one of my bottom feeders. He'll eat, and I think I scared the bejeebies out of her. <laughs> but yeah, so the food's there for them to pick at. You'll see she's eating it off of the plants right there. There's food that's on the plants in the background. I don't know if you see her right there. She's actually eating the food, the medicated food off the plants. So she's eating it. The tiger, uh, the uh, checker barbs are eating it. The rest of the epistos are eating it. So they're all eating the food. So you want to give them time the food floating around and time to eat it before you turn your filter back on. So that's how you feed the picky, picky eaters. Now, the other thing will be feeding things like uh, the puffer fish and I'll show you how to do that. The rest of the tanks that we have will be fed the exact same way and we'll do that here off camera. But just know that that's how you feed picky eaters that don't come to the top and you wanna make sure you turn the filter off. So, so that's how we're doing this and we're gonna test it and preventively treat them for parasites even if they don't have it. All right, so the last tank that we have to feed this medicated fish food to is our puffer fish. Now, if you know anything about uh, pea puffers, they're meat eaters, right? And uh, they normally like live foods or something that looks very similar. So we feed them a lot of snails. But for the next three days, that's all we're going to do for the puffer fish is three days. Because they're not showing any signs, and I know for a fact I didn't use any nets in there. But I do need to treat them for parasites one more time, and I figured I might as well go ahead and use this med. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to medicate their uh, blood worms. So in here I have some of that medicated fish food. Now this time I am going to crush it into a powder. Okay. I'm going to crush it as fine as I can possibly get it. So this is where you're going to literally turn it into dust. Right. So I have a small amount, about an eighth of a teaspoon of fish food in here that all has medication in it. Okay, and I'm like I said, I'm gonna turn it into dust. But one of the biggest concerns is getting the medicated food to bind, all right, to the frozen foods. So how do you do that, all right? Well, you do that by getting a binder. So this right here, by C, uh, by CCAM, it's called Focus. All right, this is a binding agent. You're gonna use this with the medication to bind it to the frozen or whatever, to the blood ones. All right? So. All right, so we got that down to a powder. I'm gonna scrape it off of is this a pestle? Is that what this thing is called? Or is it the mortar? Which one's the pestle and which one's the mortar? I don't know. If you know which one of these is the mortar and which one of these is the pestle, let me know in the comments below. Because I don't know. I never looked it up. So, grinding, uh, you know, this is my marble grinding uh, bowl. That's what I call it. <laughs> so. All right, so we got that cleared off there, and I'm gonna scrape all the medicated fish food in here. And like I said, it is a powder. So you wanna get it as powdery as possible.
And I'll do this every day uh, for three days to my puffer fish, my pea puffers. Instead of making it and freezing it, I only need three days worth and they only eat one meal a day for me. So um, that's the only difference is that the pea puffers only eat one meal a day. It's either I'm gonna throw in a handful of snails in there or I'm gonna feed them the frozen foods according to our fish gecko. So inside here also, I have a little bit of garlic guard and that's to add the liquid in there. All right, add liquid. And then I'm gonna add in this. Now you don't need a lot of this. This stuff is also an antibacterial agent. One of the cool parts, it comes with its own little spoon. All right. I'm gonna pull a little bit of this out of there if I can get it out of there. I'm gonna put it in here. Okay, put this back. And now with my medicated fish food spoon, I'm gonna stir this and get it to bind. So. All right, so I'm binding, using the focus to bind the medication to the blood worms with the garlic guard so that it doesn't taste like like horrible to the puffer fish. Now I know they'll eat blood worms. I've been feeding them blood worms for several several uh, you know weeks. So they love it. Alright. Puffer fish, they are wild, so I do know that they came in with potentially with parasites. So I've already treated them twice for parasites. This will be the third time I've treated them. I was going to use Krazy Pro. Alright to treat them, but I know this works too, so uh, I'm going to see how well this works at killing the parasites instead of using Prazi Pro uh, as a preventive, I'm just going to, you know, kill them. Not the puffers, but I'm going to kill the parasites. So we'll let this sit for 15 minutes and then I'll feed the puffers. Yeah, so after you get the, uh, the medicine mixed in with the blood worms, uh, you let it sit for about 15 minutes after using the focus and then after you've used the focus you bring it on over to your tank Thing else you're gonna dump in the blood worms, which you'll see here. We dumped in the blood worms right there Okay They've already eaten pretty much everything that they want so here in just a minute I'll take a, a net and get out anything that's in there. That's Got white fuzz on it because some of the for some reason these ram's horn snails, after the uh, puffers eat them, they grow this white fuzz on them. It's really weird. But I scoop it out there with nets, and as you can see, they're still coming down here trying to get those blood worms. But yeah, so once you get feed them, you'll have some leftover blood worms. What we do is we go around and we feed some, is we go around with some of that medicated blood worms and we feed some of the more picky eaters, so some of the betas. All right, we'll feed some of the uh the epistogrammas here that are just a little bit smaller i will literally take the uh the blood worms reach in there and put the food right in front of their face just to ensure that they get the medicated uh you know fish food and then i'll feed the uh, the betas in the back with the med medicated fish food and i'll do that with any of the picky eaters and that ensures that every fish no matter how big or small all get a little bit of medicine and there's just lights everywhere in this house that are blinding um <laughs> So yeah, so that's how I make sure that everybody gets medicine and everybody is going to get the, uh, uh, I'm going to call it Finbin because I can't really say the name, just like the other one I'm going to call Levy. But yeah, so Finbin uh, medicated foods and uh, we're going to do that, like I said, for a total of five days, three days for the puffers, five days for every other fish in this house. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it works and see if they eat it well. And so far they're taking to it really well. So um and then uh, in the quarantine tank over here, we are using the uh, the Levy or the Levy Mysol, whatever you want to call it, XLP. And uh, for three days, I was pulling worms off of the ground in there, but it did not look like they were dead. So I'm pretty certain that after we do the two uh, treatments of Levy Mysol on these highly infected guppies here, we will end up having to give them the fin bin as well. So yeah, so this is our quarantine tank. I'll be cleaning this out here. Um, this one is the second treatment of Levomyosol. We did that yesterday. This is, uh, you know, the second week. So the guppies look amazing. Every one of the guppies that had red worms hanging out of their butts no longer are hanging out of the vent back there. All the guppies in here are looking healthy. There's no signs of red worms in them. 
we had one epistogramma that was showing signs of red worms and uh, we put them in here also to treat them as well and he also looks much better he doesn't have a big you know vent back there full of worms anymore and um, that's good all right so we're at day what is it, day three day three uh, of the fish in quarantine with levomisol now but what you're going to do is i've already changed out 25 percent of the water yesterday which is what the instructions on the levomisol says uh, but you need to make sure that every day because you are trying to get rid of worms that are pooped out you want to make sure that you clean up the substrate every single day so day three and you can see that they're inside here there are worms on the ground now if i leave them in there and they're only paralyzed like it says for uh, the levomisol, they may be able to lay eggs into the water and reinf reinfect the fish. So every day after 24 hours, I'm going to look in the aquarium and I'm going to clean out any poop or any worms that are there and give them new fresh water. So that's what we're doing today. All right, so in the quarantine tank, like I said, this was the third day. So on the third day, most of the medicine after two 25% water changes is out. So I can take the towel off now since uh, it really doesn't matter. So now in a week, we're gonna give them the levomisol one more time and I'll go through the same process. But one of the things that I wanna mention is that after you're done messing with your quarantine tank, you wanna always clean up your stuff using either a bleach or a uh, vinegar solution, something that will get rid of and kill any parasites, bacteria, fungus that's on there, as well as washing your hands before you touch any of your other tanks or any of your other stuff in your house. So doing that will ensure that you do not cross contaminate any of your other aquariums. All right, so this is uh, the feeding of the fin bin. So All right, so over here we have uh, the grow out tank for the uh, the guppies. So what we do is because there's so many in there, we had garlic guard in here and a lot of flakes, and then we just kind of use this thing. It's the only one like this. We just dump the whole thing in there. That way everything, including the babies and everything, get a chance to eat. These pellets also, they, they smell like medicine really strong. So we actually soaked them in garlic guard for a long time. 
prior to, you know, doing the feeding. So it has the medicine, it has the guard guard, that way it'll entice them a little more. These are our starving lunatics. He was, he was really sick, but now he is doing so much better. Oh, that's poop. Don't eat it. Ew. He spit it out. Good. All right. All right, and that's it. And we'll get to the rest of it here after this. And we are now at the final stage of using the levomisol, or levy is what I'm calling it. And uh, the levomisol, though, this is the third, like I said, third treatment. I'll show you down here. They're covered. And they're looking great. I mean, as of right now, um, it's looking like this has done the trick. So three treatments, all of one week apart. All right, so we have come to our final conclusion on whether or not finbendazole or levomisole is the better choice when it comes to camelanus worms. So let's take a look at the tank that we were treating with finbendazole only. So this tank here, has the American flag fish inhabitants all right they still have worms after the full fenbendazole treatment one of the males in here is still showing it and one of the females is still showing the worms now why is that a problem because they went through the full treatment of fenbendazole and they are not cured of these camelanus worms so in my justification here I'm saying that most likely then bendazole doesn't work as well. Now let's take a look at the other tank. Now this is the other tank. In this tank here, we did the three treatments of the levomisol, and we just like, just like the finbendazole, we vacuumed the substrate and everything, and did that three times. You know, once at 24 hours, and then again at 72 hours. Everything in here has been cured of the worms not a single s sign nothing in here is showing worms anymore and this is with the levomisole they are doing really well so yeah so my conclusion is that if you have a choice between the two medicines start with levomisole levomisole uh, not only is not that expensive it also goes into the water column uh, main reason is because after research I've learned that levomisol is actually absorbed through the skin and when it's absorbed through the skin it goes into the blood those worms actually are drinking the blood of these fish and get the medicine directly into their body into their system and it paralyzes these worms now my concern was was this a temporary paralysis well I did further research and found that this was not temporary. This is a permanent paralysis with the levomisole. And because of that, that permanent paralysis will cause those worms to die no matter what. It just takes a little while. And the reason why you vacuum the substrate is because some of those worms that are paralyzed will have eggs on them. And if your fish go down and eat any of those worms off of the substrate, they will potentially get those eggs back in their system and they will hatch. Now that's the reason why you do two to three treatments of the levomisole. With the finbendazole, it's, you know, most of the time you're going to find it in medicated fish food. If you do, we're, we're, we're determining right now that the medicated fish food for the finbendazole did not work. All right. So if you have a choice between the two, I would go with levomisole and you can get that with Fritz Expel P. All right, this ain't very expensive. Uh, if you have a 10 gallon tank, one little 10 pack will work for you because since you only need one pack three times and then you'll have enough for you know two more treatments on hand. So yeah, so that's our conclusion is that after the full three week month of treatment, technically, um, we have determined that levomisol is, is the better choice. So if you have a choice between the two, go with levomisol doesn't matter what brand just uh you know this is just the one that we use but yeah so, so yeah just go with levomisol and your fish will stop showing signs of camelanus worms now if for some reason this doesn't work have the finbendazole on hand that way you can always give that to them after these three treatments 
Well, thanks for coming to our channel and looking at our comparison between the two medications that are used to treat camel anus worms and the fact that most of our tanks are completely clean. So the quarantine tank over here is completely free of camel anus worms. And the one that we did, the control tank with the finbendazole, still has worms. So we're going to start treating them with the Expel P and get rid of those. We're going to do the same uh, two, two to three treatments on here with this. And we have 100% confidence that those worms will be gone. All right, well, thanks for coming to Noob Aquatics. You have a wonderful day. Hey.